Hi guys, welcome back. Um, Mopsy has been lurking in the room and underfoot, so I thought it would pick her up and she would join us for prayer at least. Are you ready, Mopsy? All right, let's begin with our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we pray together, teach me God to add love and mercy towards others, to subtract sin and anxiety from my life, to multiply the fruits of the Holy Spirit, and to divide our differences as I share with others acts of mercy today. Um, other things you guys want to pray for, let's pray first for Lila and her mom, and her mom's soul. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Would you add in um, people that you would like to pray for? We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in a special way for people that we know um, who are sick with the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All right. Mopsy is falling asleep. What a nut. Earlier in the day, I have a, an Easter basket here, and earlier in the day, I, uh, on accident, knocked it over, and boom, Mopsy was there within, like, I don't know, two seconds. I had to scramble to pick up my stuff before she ate it all. Not surprising, Mopsy. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, I hope you guys had a great... Um, Holy Week Triduum Easter and um, Holy Monday. And now we're back. It is Tuesday, April 14th. Um, so we are doing 12-3 Theoretical Probability. Um, and I'm going to move this close if you need to. Um, just a tiny bit. There we go. If you need to take some time and pause this and... Um, copy down the notes, then please do that. Um, I'm going to go um, a little, not super fast, but um, you probably need to get this stuff down. So um, pause it, write it down, and we'll come back. All right, so I'm assuming that you have already written this down. Um, the probability of an event, we're going to put as P, probability of an event in the parentheses there, okay? Favorable outcomes are outcomes um, that that we're, that we get, okay? In, like if we pulled something out or if we rolled something. However many times that happened, that's a favorable outcome. Um, and then theoretical probability. So I like this. Um, today we're doing theoretical probability. Tomorrow we're doing experimental probability, which is super fun. Um, Theoretical means this is how many times it should happen. If you do experimental and you actually do it, will it be the same? Probably not, but it should be close, okay? And in theory, the higher you go, the, the closer you are to theoretical probability. So let's say I had a die, singular of dice, right? And you roll it, and you want to see how many times you get a five, okay? Um, well, there's six possibilities, right? A one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six, and they're all just on there once. So I would have one out of six chances to get that, okay? Um, if I divide one divided by six, um, I would get um, 66 percent, right? Six, 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 six repeating, which would be about 67 percent um, or 66.5 percent. So if I did that, um, it would be interesting because, let me just, now I'm doubting myself. Is this true? Did I do the right thing there? Two-thirds is 66 percent. Two-thirds is, all right, let's just see because now I'm totally nervous and I think I just did the wrong thing. So, all right, here we go. One divided by six is, yeah, 16. <laughs> 16 repeating with a six repeating. So, oops, there's no way that was right. Okay, at least I corrected myself and knew I was wrong. 
Um, so if it was 16 and the six repeats, it would be like 16.7%. Because I'm going to round, it's like six, 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 six tells me to round up 16.7%. Okay, so if that is true, um, if I did it 20 times, I might get something that's close to like, maybe it's 25% or 20%. If I did it 50 times, maybe it's 18%. If I did it a thousand times, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, 17.5%. If I did it a million times, maybe it's 16.5%. If I did it 10 million times, it would probably be 16.7%. Maybe it doesn't take that many to get right there. So the theoretical probability is the more you do it, the more likely you are to get exactly your theoretical probability. Okay, so here we go. Um, that is what theoretical probability is, and it's the ratio of your favorable outcomes, however many you got, um, out of the possible. So when I was talking about a die, um, and we want to see about the number five, well, there's only one of those, right? If I roll it, I, I could get, there's only one five. It's not like there's two fives on there. There's one possibility of getting five. And there are how many possible outcomes? Well, there's six because there's six sides to a die. All right. We'll do some more calculating here in a few minutes. Um, I have an event and then not the event. So those are complementary. So let's say I had, um, I did, and I'll do mutually exclusive here in a second. Um, let's say I had, I got my five. Okay, um, and it was, I rolled it um, one time out of six, okay, because there's one possibility of getting a five, and there's six possibilities. Well, what would the complementary event of that be? What's the, the opposite of that? And every time I add those up, I'm going to get like six over six or whatever. So this would be, if there's one here, then this would have to be, then there's five that didn't, that didn't uh, turn into that. So I would get six out of six. Um, let's look at my, um, so let's look at this example here. D has 20 packs um, and she put them in a big grocery bag. Five of them were raisins packs, five are nut packs, five are dried fruit packs and five are trail mix packs. That's the one I'd want. All right, so she mixes them all up, mixes, 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 reaches in, and pulls out, uh, let's say, a nut pack, okay? Um, now, how many total possible outcomes were there? How many packages were in that thing? 20. Everybody agree with that? Okay. There wasn't just one nut pack. How many were there? Five. Right? So when you pull out um, the probability of pulling out a nut pack, well, we're going to have to reduce, right? 5 divided by 20. Well, what goes into both 5 and 20? 5. Okay, good. So I'm going to divide. I'm simplifying my fraction, right? Reducing it. I get 1. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 20 divided by 5 is 4. So I can write these three different ways, okay? I can write my fraction, my reduced fraction, one-fourth. I can, now this is one of those I told you guys to remember, but if I divide that out, one divided by four would be 0.25. That's my decimal. We're not going to do very many decimals. We're either going to do fraction or we're going to do percent. Look at that. What are the two here? It is 25%. So I'm going to move that over to, whoops, this way, move it over to, and I get 25%. Okay. Um, so it's a 25% chance, a one in four chance that I'll pull out a nut pack. Because there's five of each, it's a one in four chance I pull out anything. Okay. Um, now, what if I do, does everyone understand that? I hope you do. Um, what if, what I, let's say I want to know what are my chances that I pull out a nut and 
a trail mix. And I didn't mean nut and, I meant a nut or a trail mix. So I put my hand in, what is the, what is the chance that I pull a nut or a trail mix? Well, what, what is, there are five out of these out of 20, right? There are how many of the trail mix? There are five out of 20. If I add those up, I'll get 10 out of 20. Divide that by 10, and I would get one half. What percent? I don't even have to divide it, right? One divided by two is 0.5, but that is 50%. One half, whoops, is 50%. Um, so it's a 50% chance that if I reach in, I would pull out a nut pack or a trail mix, okay? Those are called mutually exclusive. Um, mutually exclusive what? Mutually exclusive events. Mutually exclusive events have an or in them. Okay, they don't necessarily have anything in common. I pull this out or I pull the other one out. Okay, um, make sure that you have that written down. Um, now the next thing we're going to do is overlapping events. Okay, I am going to erase this. I'll leave this because that is our main thing we're looking at. Okay, um, so overlapping or did it give another? Nope, just overlapping events. Okay, I want you to think about um, this in connection with a, like a Venn diagram. Okay, so let's say I have, um, did I write these down? Was it the marble thing? I believe it was. Okay, here it is. Okay, let's say I have um, a bowl or a bag again, um, and I have six blue marbles. Okay, these, I'm not gonna write marbles every time. They're all marbles. I have six blue in there. I have four red. I have seven green. And I have three yellow. Okay. Um, before we do the overlapping events, let's just do some, uh, some theoretical probability of this, okay? So let's say I got, um, what's the, I wanna know, what is the, what are the odds of pulling out a red? Well, how many reds are there? Four. Out of how many total? Well, six plus four is 10, and seven plus three is 10, so 10 plus 10 is 20. It didn't tell me how many. I had to add them up. You got to do that, okay? So look at all possibilities, add them all up. That's on your bottom, all possible outcomes. And then the favorable, favorable outcome, how many, what's the, what is the odds of me getting a red, okay? Um, so four out of 20. Now I'm gonna have to reduce that. Let's say I wanted a fraction for that. Well, what goes into both 4 and 20? Yes, 4. That would be 1. 20 divided by 4 is 5, so 1 to 5. Okay? The probability be 1 to 5. Um, I could also say, um, what would that be if I am... Um, dividing that, what would my percentage be? Well, the first thing I'm going to do, and you guys can use a calculator, um, yeah, is 0.2. Well, what percent is that? Well, when I think percents, I got to have um, my two places, right? So I'm going to add a zero on there, and that would be 20%. 20% chance that I get a red. Um, what would be the percent chance against getting red? So if my percent chance for getting red is 20%, what would the chance against getting a red be? What do I have left, you guys? 
How did I do that? Well, 80, 20% plus 80% is 100%, right? It's always 100% out of the total. Um, but I could add all these up if I wanted to do it the hard way. 7 plus 3 is uh, 10. 10 plus 6 is 16. 16 out of 20, right? That would be all of them against that. So 16 out of 20, again, I could divide by 4. I would get 4 fifths. When I divide 4 fifths out, I get 0.8 or 80%. Okay, that's against getting red. My probability against getting red, it's 80%. Not a great chance that I'm going to get a red if I, if I pull it out. What is the one 4? or in favor of, sorry, what is my um, likelihood of uh, the probability in favor of getting red? 20%. So I'm looking at in favor of and against, okay? I can um, do both of those. All right, so Let's say, so we're going to do overlapping events now, okay? And I'm going to make a Venn diagram out of this. Um, so I'm going to do, what is the um, likelihood of getting, let me see what I'm going to do here. Um, okay, it wasn't with these at all. No, will get rid of these. Um, die, again, okay, the sides of a dice. Um, of a die, and what would be the outcome of rolling an odd number? Okay, that's my first one. Um, you guys, what are my odd numbers, right? We'll do that in a second, okay? And then my second one is what would be the um, likelihood of rolling a factor of six? Hmm, these are going to be overlapping events. I hope that something overlaps, okay? What are my odd numbers and also factors of six? Well, let's do factors of six first. Is six and one, would you agree that six and one are? Yeah. Are any of those odd? Uh, a one is. And then what times what else is six? Three times two, right? Um, what else... Uh, three is odd, so I'm going to put that there. And what are all my odd numbers? One, well, that was already there. Three and five. Okay, so my overlapping events here, one, two, three, um, yeah, four doesn't even fall in any of those because it's not odd and it's not a factor of six, so it's not on there at all, okay? The overlapping event would be my one and three. Okay, that is um, my overlapping event. All right, so um, you guys are going to be mostly doing um, in favor of um, things like just finding the probability of something, um, the theoretical probability, favorable outcomes over number of possible outcomes, and then um, and then a few of them finding the complement of. Um, so that, remember, the complement of would be like the not. So however many I got would be how many I, the opposite um, of that, okay? And that would be the complement of. Um, you are going to do this in your book, and then you're going to be writing them on your, um, on the turn-in sheet, okay? Um, that is it. I hope you work hard, and I hope you have a great day. Stay warm. It's been super chilly and rainy, not rainy, snowy. Um, so, yeah, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.